Hello, I'm Mary V. Today, let's talk about whether you're using too much finger and wrist action to change the bow. So when we change our bow, we obviously need to cushion the action uh, as much as we can to make it smooth and to disguise the, the bow change. But sometimes um, the finger action and the wrist action can become far too much. And when we look at the tip of the bow when we're doing uh, a little bit too much, it becomes, uh, you can see the amount of wayward movement there is. So you can see that it, it actually becomes harder to control when you've got larger movements going on, especially at the heel. It also happens in the middle if you're using too much uh, wrist and fingers to change the bow. It's very difficult to keep a really accurate uh, contact point and the bow is moving around a lot so the sound becomes uh, less clear. So I had this exact issue when I was uh, younger and I was moving around like this, I thought I was doing really well. And one day my teacher came in with a feather and said, right, uh, this part of your arm has really gone to sleep. You're not using it properly and you're using your fingers and your wrist instead. So he placed the feather on my hand, on my two fingers here. and told me to bow only using my, and change the bow only using my forearm. So I started doing that. So I discovered by having the, by having my fingers immobilized by the feather, that I started to use my forearm more and I was able to change the bow with minimal cushioning and a little movement of my fingers. And he showed me that one of the most important parts of the bowing arm is actually in the forearm. And if there's too much uh, finger action and wrist action and movement, it can take over from the action of the forearm and if you immobilize your fingers uh, and wrist with something very light like a feather, and then it teaches you to use your forearm to make the changes. So now without the feather, um, I'll show you the sort of minimal movement that you actually need to change the bow. So if you're one of those people that, that find that are thinking, I wonder if I'm using too much, try to go, try to sort of strip away all the extra stuff in, in your bow arm and build it up from the minimum. Once you realize and you've brought the forearm back in to your uh, bow action, then if you want to add a little more um, finger action and wrist action, that's fine. But it's best to build it up from um, the foundation of making sure that the forearm is functioning properly. So that brilliant way that my teacher taught me about the forearm uh, is so clever uh, that I thought I'd share it with you. And I hope you go out and get yourself a feather and try, try the test to see whether you can actually wake your forearm up and get it to work properly. So I hope you enjoy that and I'll say bye-bye for now. Bye.